Hey guys, Mr. Washam here, and I'm going to show you how to complete the population diversity activity. It's actually quite simple to do. You just need a couple things. So uh, this is the population diversity uh, worksheet that is posted in Classroom. You can print one off if you want, or you can just uh, redraw the data table on a sheet of paper yourself. Really, really simple. It's just uh, for keeping tally marks. You need a sheet of one color of paper, preferably white. So we've called this activity white mouse, gray mouse, but you may not have gray paper, right? So like I used white to represent my white mouse, and then I need two sheets of another color. And so I'm actually using pink instead of gray, so I'm doing white mouse, pink mouse. If you don't have colored paper, then you can color paper yourself, whatever. What, whatever you got that works, okay? You got something that'll work. The other thing you need is a dice. If you don't have a dice, go to Google and type in dice roller. Uh, and then you need some sort of storage containers. I'm gonna use uh, a Ziploc bag, a bowl, and two cups. Also need a pair of scissors and a writing device. So the first thing that you need is you need 25 squares of each color. So this is the easiest way I think this is to do this. Just cut yourself, don't overcomplicate this. Just cut yourself a strip about like that and then you can just start cutting squares about like that super simple right i'm going to cut the pink mouse white mouse pink mouse Okay, so I messed up what I said earlier. You only really need one storage container, not two, one storage container. So you're gonna take your storage container and I'm gonna take my 25 pink mice. Base, hold up your white mice. And she's got her 25 white mice and we're gonna put them all into the storage container, all right? So I'm gonna put all 25 my mice in there and she's gonna put all 25 of her mice in there. So that's 25 and 25, which is how many, Basil? 50. 50, that's right. So 50 total uh, squares of paper in there. All right, 25 of each. And then we're just gonna shake it up. And now I've got two other containers. I've got, you know, I'm gonna designate this bowl as living. So these are my mice that will remain living. And then this bag here, I'm gonna call dead. And these are my mice that are gonna die. All right, so I've got all my mice in the cup, right? All 50 mice are in the cup. I've also got my recording sheet, and so this is how this works. I'm gonna draw two mice out of the cup, which means two squares, right? There are three options. You can get white and white, two white squares of paper, right? So white and white, which equals a white mouse. White and white would equal a white mouse. That is the recessive trait. The other option is I can draw out a white and a pink, or whatever color you have, and that would be a pink mouse, because pink is dominant. And finally, the last thing I could draw out is a pink and a pink, which would also obviously equal a pink mouse, or again, whatever color you have. So those are the only three options. I take my second sheet of paper, in my case, pink, and that is my background, or their home. This is where the mice are gonna live. They live on this sheet of paper, right? So you can see, Pink are gonna hide where white will be visible. So I have all my mice in the cup. I'm gonna draw two of them out. And then I either get a white mouse or a pink mouse based on the combination I just told you. I then need to find out if the mice is gonna live or if it's gonna die. If it lives, I put it in the bowl. If it dies, I put it in the bag. So we're gonna start with what's called generation one. So you see on your paper, it says generation one, and if it's a white mouse, does it survive? If it's a pink mouse, does it survive? We'll draw two, Basil draw two. She drew a white and a pink, which is a uh, pink mouse. You then need to roll the dice, all right? So I'm gonna roll the dice, and I rolled a two. Okay, I rolled a two. So the rules for the dice are right here. 
right? If you roll a one or a six, no matter what color the mouse is, it lives. If you roll a two, three, four, or five, it has to be the same color as the background. Well, since I had a pink mouse and a pink background, that mouse lives. So that mouse is living. He's gonna go into the bowl. He's gonna survive for later. And I will continue to draw out of this cup until I have no mice remaining in the cup. Now make sure you're marking down every time. Does your mouse live or die? All right, let's just pretend, and I'm gonna cheat and look, that I get a white and a white, which is a white mouse. And so there's my white mouse on the pink background. And then let's just pretend that I rolled my dice, okay? But I rolled a five, okay? On a five, mice of the same color background live. Well, this guy is a white mouse on a pink background. He does not live. So Basil, he goes in the dead bag or whatever you want to use. Once I have rolled all of or drawn all of the mice out of the cup and there are no mice left in the cup, I take only the mice that are in my living bowl and I put them back in the cup. All mice that are in the dead bag remain dead and I now move on to generation two. Generation two. And I do the same thing over again, this time out of generation two. Once I've done generation two, I do generation three, four, and five. This activity will take you just a little bit of time. It won't take you super long. All you're doing is pulling mice out of a cup and rolling a dice to see if it lives or dies. You check mark if it lives or dies. And then we have a pre-made graph set up for you in Google Sheets. And all you have to do in uh, that Google Sheet is insert the number of living mice and it will automatically generate the graph for you. Hit turn in. Pretty simple, right Baze? Mm -hmm. All right, pretty simple. It's easy. All right, if you have any questions, please make sure you join our live sessions. Bye, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah.